Yesterday wasn't too interesting of a day. We're going home today, except Lynette is complaining the car feels like it's gonna die. So this is, this is great news. Hopefully it won't die before we get home. It's been working, so that's good. That's good. We just spent a bunch of money fixing this car like two months ago. Cars, man. I don't know. There was some maybe some interesting stuff I can pull from yesterday. I need like a Joby. I can't believe I'm kind of saying this. I do like using a Joby for my other camera, but if you've watched this vlog, you know it's caused me trouble. Um, but right now I'm using a a uh, Kleenex box with a pen to create a little bit of an angle. What might have a better impact is today I met with Neil Salas Griffin. We just had a talk in front of a camera for a good half hour and I thought, you know, maybe I'll just, I'll split up his, us chatting with each other because I thought there was a lot of really interesting nuggets in there of advice. Here's the first part of it. We talk a lot about jobs to be done, startups, and, and vlogging. So we'll who, introduce who yourself first. Yeah, so I'm Neil. Uh, I uh, started, I guess, one of the first coding boot camps or coding schools. Uh, it was originally called Code Academy, and now it's called the Starter League. Uh, we sold our company to Full Stack Academy, which is another Y Combinator company last year. And then uh, once I sold that, I took over a, non a nonprofit that's called Code Now, and I'm the CEO of that. And now my job is instead of teaching adults how to program and get jobs as engineers and designers and entrepreneurs, uh, I teach high schoolers from primarily underrepresented backgrounds how to get into programming and how to prototype their own ideas and build software. So. Um, yeah, I'm trying to level the playing field and open up this whole world to people that have never even known that they could be a part of it, and that's my passion. So I teach through my school, through my nonprofit, and then I'm also a professor at Northwestern University in the law school and at the engineering school. So I'm pretty busy, and I got a lot going on, but my ultimate, deepest passion is sharing knowledge and information with people that can do meaningful work with it. You, why did you start this? Um, so why did I start vlogging? Like, I've been doing a bunch of writing, and I'm gonna yeah. start calling out some people who are yeah. pissing me off. <laughs> I used to write for Fast Company. I okay. had, like, a gig there. I had an editor. They were, were publishing, like, all my, you know, articles and drafts yeah. and stuff. It was a good thing. Then they shut down Fast Company Labs, and they just, like, abandoned me and my editor. Like, we can't even get in the door anymore there. Okay. Getting the word out about ideas that I had, it was just gone. Mm. So then I try to get back at Fast Company. It's been, it has sucked. Um, I they blow me off, and it doesn't even make any sense. I've generated a ton of traffic for them. I don't understand. So like that pissed me off. All of this has been frustrating from like a writing perspective. So like I started, I think, just to like be like, what is video all about? Mm. And then I bumped into like Casey Neistat. Yeah. Who's like doing this daily thing, filming himself, and he had a new business, and it was just like, huh, maybe I could do that. So that's yeah. Wow. Okay, so maybe I could do that, and then, like, what was the time difference between maybe I could do that, Casey Neistat, to execution? Because you I, put it, I looked up videos from the past. You had a video that you did, like, a year ago. Yeah. Right? So when did, so that's really interesting. I don't know when. Because, yeah, like, so that was, a year ago I filmed myself in front of a, my cell phone. I tried mm -hmm. to do, like, a Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. I think I was starting to see, like, I think it was the things that were launching, like Facebook Live right. and all these live things. You were, like, just Facebook. trying it out. I was just trying it out, and I was like, I wonder what that's like. I'll film myself in front of Facebook Live. Hey, so interesting news this week. McDonald's announced that they have posted, like, a 35% bump in corporate profit. And I'll see what happens. And the quality is just shit. And like, I don't think any, I think I was so embarrassed to do it. I film myself Facebook live, but I did it private. Oh. So I film myself live, but I was the only one <laughs> yeah. watching it. Yeah. And so, but then I put it on YouTube or maybe I published it. I, I did finally publish it on Facebook, I think. But then maybe I think I downloaded the video and put it up on YouTube. Oh, wow. And so it was just this like grainy, it was in my bedroom, front facing camera, which is only like 720p. Yeah. So like it all was terrible. The lighting's terrible. Right. So doing this was also another one of those like, can I talk? to a camera and reach an audience that's the same as reaching someone at a conference where I can speak my mind
mind that isn't me traveling to a bunch of places. Right, and it lives forever rather than being more exclusive and right. that kind of thing. So, right. Yeah, yeah, that's powerful. So a lot of people watch this and they're like creating a product for the mm -hmm. first time or they're creating a business for the first time or yeah. they're trying to market something. Yep. What, uh, anything, what strikes you? Is there something, you know, on your mind lately that's, that's interesting? Definitely. So, I mean, I've been watching your videos, Nate, and you've been talking a lot about jobs to be done, right? And that's something that is very deep and core to me now because I, you know, I've known Bob Mesta and working with Ryan since 2012, right? So I've been learning about and seeing this kind of the story arc of jobs to be done theory really coming to, you know, a head when it comes to, you know, just being practiced and applied and actual results and people um, finding success and in, in utilizing it. So I would say with jobs to be done, like one thing that hasn't been said yet, or I didn't hear you say on your blog yet, our vlog that Bob Mesta has said is uh, bitchin' ain't switching. So bitchin' ain't switching is basically about uh, when people are complaining about something, you may think that that's a problem worth solving, but unless they're actually doing something that's like more extreme behavior, they're like they're actually putting duct tape on something or they're making a decision, a real purchase, um, that's where the truth comes out, totally. right? That energy that we're always hunting for in those interviews and those conversations. So to make it personal, uh, I've been doing jobs to be done interviews with uh, potential students for you know my programs in my schools, and you know the big difference uh, in our program now is actually charging for the program, even if it's not real and even if people can't afford it. Coming up with that kind of value, uh, drawing a line in the sand to say, hey, this is worth something. Then you get the feedback you need because up till then, if you're just offering things for free and that's how you think you're going to get started, you're not going to get the truth out of people as to whether what you have is worth something to them or not. Totally. So I think that's really powerful and just one of many things that I would, you know, think about as far as applying jobs to be done theory. I hope you dug the chat with Neil. Uh, it ended up being kind of long, so I'll share, you know, the last few bits tomorrow. You should follow Neil on Twitter. He's a really great guy. He's very motivating too. I talked to him today about a lot of the challenges um, that I still have at High Rise, and I feel very, very optimistic and pumped after I talk to him. He's really awesome. Trip back home is going well. I don't know, the car doesn't feel as bad as Lynette made it sound. It feels normal to me, but I know we shot and got gas. So far, so good. So I don't anticipate any problems on the road. Except for this troublemaker. What are you up to in here? Are you driving? <laughs> You're doing a great job. We are back home. We had a good trip back home. Car did fine. Um, I still have a lot of editing to do for tonight. Starting nine o'clock. You miss your ball? <laughs> you find your ball? You wish we could have taken your ball? And so stay tuned. Hopefully I can uh, get some more folks on the vlog soon. And please, if you dig these videos, please hit that thumbs up. And if you're new here, I upload a new video every day talking about business and marketing, and product design, and things that challenges I even go through and things I try to do to fix them and even just getting through life's obstacles. And I hope you had a great start to your week and I'll see you again tomorrow, everybody. Bye.